The extrovert thinking function. Features of extrovert thinking. Three major components influence extrovert thought production. Objective data transmitted by sense perception, subjective sources, and unconscious sources. For the extrovert, the criterion by which he judges things is supplied by external conditions. Speaking of ideas, the culturally accepted and agreed upon is often what he sees as valid. Concepts transmitted through tradition, socialization, or observable facts form the basis of the metric of extrovert judgment. The flip side would be a judgment based on a subjective metric. Standards for the way he ought to live and for the things he ought to believe are put forth by the person himself. The polar opposite of extrovert judgment. The extrovert internalizes the collectively, socially accepted. He doesn't put effort in devising his own views, but selects the ideals most suitable for him from outside sources. Anything that goes against these ideals is seen as impractical. So, in judging whether a particular thinking is extroverted or not, we must first ask, by what criterion does it judge? Does it come from outside, or is its origin subjective? An example would be someone who believes that the sky is blue due to a habitual contact with objective proof that the sky is blue, in fact. Another who knows that it is blue, actually, but chooses to believe in his subjective imagination that blue is just a word, and that although the sky is blue, he thinks it has no color. The first chose to believe what is agreed upon based on evidence from the external. The second chooses to believe in his own fantasies, his own subjective views. A further criterion is the direction the thinking takes in drawing conclusions, whether it is principally directed outwards or not. We question the course or the pattern the thoughts will take, whether from the objective data the thinking is that of abstracting or that of concretizing. We could say the extroverted thinking pattern is dominated by logic and looking at the world as mechanical a process possible. It is devoid of fantastical daydreaming, rather analytical. This is an object in front of me, these are the characteristics of the object, its purposes for so-and-so activity, such is a description of the pattern of extroverted thoughts. There is no going beyond the thing, sticking personal expectations to it, coloring it with what one thinks of it. In this respect, extroverted thinking is useful in making unbiased deductions and objective conclusions about the real world. An example is the practical thinking of the businessman, the engineer, or the scientist, which involves observation of external phenomena, statistical data, deriving conclusions, and implementing corrections for improvement. A thought pattern merely based on connecting the dots of what is actually available in front of us, completely devoid of philosophical jargon. Also, this thought pattern must end up with objective conclusions just like it started from concrete data. Even when my thinking is preoccupied with concrete things and could be described as extrovert to that extent, the direction it will take still remains an essential characteristic and an open question, namely, whether or not in its further course it leads back again to objective data, external facts or generally accepted ideas. In concern of a philosopher, he deals with ideas unlike the physicist and so he is more prone to color his conclusions with subjective emotions, assumptions or to speak of metaphysics and the unseen, like value systems or ideals, concepts of a fickle nature. However, if he begins abstracting from the observable, like the fact that the sun is to shine every day, then deduce an objective truth or practical advice from that, he will have been considered to have entertained an extroverted, objective train of thought, given that his invention has provided practical value. Extroverted thinking features an outward directedness, but there still is a subject, a person from which the thinking emerges, and no matter how outwardly projected his thoughts are, the starting point is always subjective, but its final product nonetheless will be an object-related induction. Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate your attention and see you in the next one.